On this week's episode of IT Unplugged, we look at how to effectively budget for your IT needs. At M2 Technology, we're on a mission to make IT accessible to everyone. Join us on our journey to demystify the ever-evolving world of business technology. Are you ready to get unplugged? Welcome back to IT Unplugged. I'm Brandon. And I am Mike. Mike, today we are gonna talk about budgeting for IT. Um, every CEO's favorite topic, they just love it. Uh, Everyone loves budgets. Yeah, everybody loves budgets uh, and spending money on things, so uh, especially IT. But uh, with that being said, when a company is budgeting for IT, what are the key components that they should be budgeting for? Kind of break it down into different buckets, right? You've got security, I would say, is the most important. So security has little sub buckets that live inside of it. But it's a lot of buckets. Like, let's say okay. there's, there's a lot of buckets. Okay, it's a bucket hierarchy, but it's not a pyramid scheme. So, okay, um, it's kind of like Michael Scott. It's a pyramid scheme, but it's upside down. <laughs> okay, um, <laughs> security, and then there's different aspects of security. Let's say it's hardware and software side. Okay, um, looking at it from uh, totally different is maybe something that you you can't deal without. And when you're budgeting for IT, whether it's outsourced or internal. You know, like you need to have emails, right? Mm -hmm. So, okay, you're going to need a budget for that, but you also kind of can't go without email or, sure. you know, maybe it's like your ISP. So your internet service provider, you need to have internet. Yeah. So uh, you have spectrum and it's fiber and it's this much a month. Perfect. Okay. Maybe include that in your budget. Mm -hmm. So that's not the, the, you know, the thing that you then have to go pull money from, from something else for, uh, looking back at security. Right. If it's uh, a service that's a relatively fixed cost, like maybe it's a router that you yep. purchase once and then you have that router for a set amount of time, um, that would be budgeted for differently than something that you would need to pay for monthly or annually. Okay. So like, how do you know, I guess, so we have hardware, software, we have it in the buckets of the buckets. Um, and when you're talking about like that router and stuff, okay, we buy that, um, you know, how, what are like some best common practices when it comes to that hardware, like routers and computers? Um, how do you budget for those things that you don't need every year or every month? Uh, really common practices will, will explain to someone what the cost would be for a product that you can then devalue over multiple years. Okay. So in, we'll just run with this cause we're, we're kind of on the topic of routers, right? Uh, maybe you're, you're a larger company. You're asking a lot of your router, you're, you know, a multi-site VPN. You have a lot of people working remotely, um, a high level of security, all of these great things, but it's a big expensive piece of hardware sure there's licensing but maybe the licensing is annual or maybe the, the licensing you know you work with your msp to have a monthly package for perfect uh you still have to buy that hardware yeah right and if if that is a one-time purchase if that's not something that you can spread monthly maybe at least then your accounting staff can you know devalue that over 12 months over mm -hmm. 24 months um whatever whatever the, the proper way to do that yep. would be <laughs> this is not financial advice yeah. the but, amortization of yeah, this asset no, you, no, no you know yeah. maybe that kicks in after 12 months and then sure. you can spread it over the next 36 or whatever whatever the case is um that lines up well with the hardware life cycle Okay. Yeah, absolutely. I, one of the things that I've seen at some of the best places is having that hardware life cycle. And like, <laughs> you'd be like, you just kind of think like, oh yeah, computers need to be replaced this year. But you know, some of the best places are doing it by like little portions, right? Like, okay, three computers are coming up this year and three computers are coming up the yeah. next year. You know, like they, they're really, really organized with that. So there's not some crazy, um, oh my gosh, this year IT costs Thirty yeah, thousand dollars. Like, you had to replace every we piece of equipment. One hundred laptops. Yes. You know, yeah, yeah. It's uh, we we love that. Mm -hmm. You know, we, we'll <laughs> we'll gladly help you replace all one hundred of your laptops. Um, solutions at M two Technology, but if it, that's that's not always the case, and that's not always not best practice. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Absolutely. What, what I would recommend, and what we do recommend when we help build out lifecycle plans, is you know maybe it's quarterly, or we start with whatever is losing warranty first. Sure. So hey, you know we have. 40 computers. Um, it's, uh, we've done approximately 10 a year. Perfect. That's awesome. Okay. So if of your 10 a year that you replace, that means that, you know, the 10 you did this year, four years from now or three or whatever your warranty yep. term, they're going to be out. So yep. let's start with that. We're going to structure it around that. Cause it's kind of a moot point. You know, you're mm -hmm. going to be out of warranty. Do you feel comfortable running it without maybe, maybe yes, maybe no, but you know, you've had it four years, like, okay, we're going to do, you know, two every two months. So we're yeah. going to do 
you know, three every six months or whatever the case is. Yeah. No, I, I like that kind of way of going about it. And like, first off, coming up with a plan makes everything feel easier too, like mm-hmm. uh, as you're going through, but it, it's also a plan. So you don't have to follow it exactly. Like you still have control over it. And uh, if you're like, yeah, it's something this, to base a budget off. Of. Yeah, exactly. So if you have a switch or a router and you're like, yeah, five years, uh, some places I see like get into this thing where it's like, oh, they said five years. We said five years as an MSP. We better replace this. It's like, well, you know, maybe it's something that can last another six months or 12 months. And I think having that it's relationship. It's going to turn off. Yeah. Right? You know, yeah. It hits five years. It knows it turns five years old and it just dies. Yeah. You know, it keels it's, over. It's not an Apple battery, you yeah. know? Oh, I'm sorry. Okay. Uh, yeah. <laughs> sorry. I know you're a fan. Uh, <laughs> but. Oh, that's all right. Yeah. Yeah. Um, Justified. But. but I think there's two sides to that, right? Like we have, all right, you don't have to replace it if not, but then there's also that understanding of um, it can't just be like only squeaky wheels get the, the grease kind of yeah. thing. Uh, not, not blown out of proportion to the other end of the spectrum where it is, it's, it, you know, somebody's trying to make their, their windows XP machine that, you know, you, you start with a literal crank yeah. uh, in the morning, right? And you've got to bottle feed it past 3 p.m. on a Thursday because it's going to die. Sure. Like, maybe let go. Yeah, you know, yeah. That's, that's okay to replace unless yeah. you have an extremely strong, you know, mental attachment to it. Yeah. But um, you can you can make stuff last. And I will say that that's, that's beneficial. You know, mm-hmm. in the past, maybe maybe eight years ago, something would last. And just from the trends that we've seen, something would last not as long as it does now. Some of these desktops that we're putting out, you know, will still apply a five-year warranty yeah. to or, you know, three to six-year warranty to, um, you know, purchased from OEM. And it's for sure lasting the entire life cycle when in mm-hmm. the past we would have to be relying on warranty a lot more. Yeah. Uh, don't know if that's the manufacturer or the parts that the manufacturer is using, if it's just technology as a whole or what. But um, there's also been a lot of advancements in the last you know, 10 years, like sure. now solid states are just so common that yeah. everyone has them. Like maybe that, that alone is, is keeping things alive, but, uh, not to say that everything dies in two years. Mm-hmm. That's definitely yeah. not the case, but yeah. li- having a proper life cycle and plan helps with budgeting, mm-hmm. which is, is a win-win. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Just remember that introvert in your office that's using the computer that never complained about it, but it still keeps spinning. Like, look out for that person too. You know what I mean? That's never, never said anything, but he's got the computer. Like he's probably still fine. It's like a spectrum at my, I'm just crapping on spectrum, whatever. Uh, but you know, at, at my, uh, house my router uh i i called or it was my modem or something like that and and i'm like hey um you know i'm not getting the same speed they're like oh yeah that one went out of date like a year ago and i'm like oh were you guys gonna call me and and replace it or let me know like oh we just wait for you to call us and i'm like uh you know don't do that to your people too like you need the up-to-date stuff for them and it's gonna help efficiency uh as well so there's kind of two sides to it but um you know, with that being said, what are some common mistakes you see from uh, business owners when they're uh, going ahead and budgeting for IT? Uh, kind of mistake, kind of just like it, it happens very frequently and we we help adjust that or we, we help work through that is there's a lot of sticker shock sometimes, mm-hmm. uh, especially from somebody that maybe has internal, or you're doing a lot on your own or you're, you're coming from maybe like the local guy, mm-hmm. right? And you're moving to kind of one of the bigger players in the, in the industry. Um, maybe what you're running as far as like a security software isn't up to snuff with what you should be running, or maybe you're not even running like a security software. That's a really good example is antivirus. You know, maybe you're running windows defender that's built in and it's it's free. It comes on windows. Like that's fantastic. It's a great Um, price. It's a great price. Three (laughs) 99. It's fantastic. Uh, but when you go from nothing to then having something, even a small dollar amount on every single computer, you know, that, that could be scary. Yeah. Um, or if you, you don't have, which we don't really run into, thankfully, but if you don't have any type of security appliance on site, you're just running Spectrum in your case, yeah. you're running your Spectrum modem for your business. You know, yeah. it's doing all of your networking needs or, or you think it is. Yeah. yeah, yeah <laughs> right. Yeah. And, and then you have to go buy a security appliance and you find out that they have a license on it and you find out that this is something that, you know, could eventually need replacement. Mm-hmm. You know, you have a life cycle, right? Sure. Uh, so again, that's kind of like a, a nothing to something situation yeah. and, and 
that's scary sometimes. So, you know, we help you uh, digest that easily. Mm-hmm. Um, a lot of times lately it's been, you know, maybe we, we figure out like an annual plan for you or a monthly plan to have your licensing. So you get what you need. Um, we're breaking it down in a, a palatable content to, you know, maybe it's this much, uh, this much annually or this much monthly for set terms or something and, and, you know, help you understand what's actually going into that. Sure. Yeah. Yeah. I think it's the education of really like, Hey, this is what you're really getting here. And, and also that mindset, like if you haven't like, uh, somebody was talking to me the other day, uh, and he said, okay, there's three things that you do with money, right? You, you make money, you multiply money and you protect money. Um, and when it comes to it Mm -hmm. protecting, I mean, it, it can help with efficiency, but a lot of times it's protecting everything. And a lot of people never get to that last part of protecting the money and the business that they have so if they've never done it then that first time just like you're saying um and it's not that expensive i'm gonna i'm just gonna say it flat out like it's not that expensive to put the bare minimum on like a small company uh type stuff it's not but if you've never done it it's totally different right it's like um i've never uh i'm the worst neighbor in the world okay um well, yeah, go ahead. Like, well, oh, like, like go you, ahead. sorry, I, was, oh, I, I don't know if you're a terrible neighbor. Yeah, I'm just going to go there ahead. There was going to be something else after that. No, 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 that was it. Yeah, that, let's let's end it there. This is a wrap. Um, <laughs> you're, Brandon, Brandon's a terrible neighbor. Yeah. Uh, it, like you said, with you know, maybe the business owner is coming from doing it internally yeah. only, right? And and it's it's the exact same example of. You know, you, you know that you need this, but you don't really know what. So we, we need to be more secure, right? Yep. Okay. Hey, we can break this down and tell you these are the things, you know, this does this, this does, you know, networking and this does email security. Like there's all these different layers to it. It's it's not necessarily just one thing, yeah. you know, that yeah. encompasses everything. Or, hey, you have a really secure Wi-Fi network. Great. Um, do you have any type of like mail filtering or mail security? Well, no, no. We have like a really secure Wi-Fi. Hmm. Okay. Um, you know, what if you get a whole bunch of uh, spam mail? You get a whole flood of, of phishing or you know something like that. There's different aspects, yeah, right? Yeah, so absolutely. explaining that and rather than just throwing, you want everything secure? Perfect. Here's this cost, yep, right? Yep. You're like, no, get out of here. That's a lot of money. Yeah. Yeah. It's a lot of that education. I do need to explain the bad neighbor thing because I can't just leave that in. No, I think that's good. No. (laughs) With uh, like with the neighbor thing, Mike, don't don't interrupt. All right, we gotta we gotta let let me at least get this out. Okay. All right. right. Uh, I'm the only one dandelions on my entire block because I'm that person, right? Um, But the reason being, I think, like I got approached for spraying, uh, and I've never done it before, and I'm like. Ugh, how much does this cost? And it's like forty dollars an application. It's year round, and yeah, that's probably not even that much. But because I've never paid anything for it, like I've never done it, I'm like, oh gosh, I can't pay two hundred sixty dollars for this. Like that's crazy. Of course not. Even though you know, go to eat a couple times, and you know, there's two hundred sixty yeah. bucks. Uh, it's kind of like that same thing. You never done it, and then you go to it. It's always going to be a shock. So go out and talk to other people, and kind of like before you meet. Um, with MSPs, go talk to people that are in your industry and be like, what do you guys pay for cybersecurity? Um, I'd say do that all the time because, I don't know, like leverage that on top of that. Hey, this company, we have 50 people, they have 50 people. And uh, you, you're, yeah. you're meaning other people in the, in, in, in your case, like your industry. Yeah, so not, yeah. you know, you, you can talk to other MSPs for sure, Yeah. but maybe more beneficial of feeling out, you know, hey, if three of your friends that you know, in your industry work with your builder, right? Yeah. Your three other builder friends all like to work with, you know, Jim and Jim's kept them very secure. And this is the example and Mm -hmm. great reviews. Like maybe, maybe start with, you know, start with that. Yeah. Yeah. That's, that's a great resource. Yeah, absolutely. So, um, another question that I kind of have is how can business owners stay informed about, new technologies as they're kind of coming out um, because they're going to potentially need to budget for those uh, mm-hmm. in the future. So what are some of the ways that they can do that? We have a fantastic newsletter that is a monthly newsletter uh, with uh, changing topics and different examples of, of things that are in like tech trends and news. Mm-hmm. And, um, you know, maybe there's some trivia in there mixed in where you can win some cookies and, and you know, treats and stuff like that. Uh, also, this podcast is, is a 
a pretty decent resource, I yeah. like to think. Yeah. Um, it, we were looking for confirmation it, off camera. Like, <laughs> yep. Right, yeah. Okay, yeah. good. They all, everybody agreed just for okay. the Everyone record. kind of looked away, honestly. Yeah, yeah. I was like, what? <laughs> what? <laughs> Guys. Um, yeah, great resources. Um, if if you're, you maybe you're visiting your local area of commerce, the meeting, something yeah. like that, or chamber of commerce, um, there's probably somebody, depending on, depending on the area that you live in, there's probably somebody there that can also give some input on um, a technical resource. Sure. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. All great kind of ways. You just have to seek it. I would say that trust is good when you have a partner and you can be like, what are the newest things? But even for M2 technology, I would say, like, people trust you, Mike. People trust your other network engineers. Yeah. I'd still say go do some stuff on your own. Go look. You know what I mean? Like, oh, yeah. Because you just never know. There might be new things. Maybe you'll bring it uh, to our attention even and be like, hey, I saw this new thing that's just dropping out, uh, AI involved. What can we do with it? And we can explore it together. Wi-Fi so. 32's out. Should yeah. I be interested in that? <laughs> yeah. Wow. Yes. Yeah. You have no. <laughs> <laughs> that does not exist, sir. Uh, all right. Uh, and then final question that we have, what are some... Uh, strategies that business owners can use or just different ways to kind of um, be cost effective when it comes to their IT budget. Yeah. Uh, it, it, again, planning ahead, mm -hmm. you know, life cycle planning, that's yep. very beneficial. Um, you know, maybe taking it to a point knowing you may, maybe, maybe what's killer for you is you just absolutely can't have you know, more than 12 hours of labor a month for sure. your, your MSP. Cool maybe take some of that time and uh either you know if, if you're the technical resource for your location maybe like learn a little bit of the kind of the basics like yeah. hey before we call every time with this mouse issue uh they always ask us when we get on the phone like did you try like unplugging it from the computer <laughs> you know like did you check your batteries <laughs> sure like, take those steps and you know maybe it's a half hour a month but maybe that's a half hour a month that your boss or or that you don't have to pay them yeah right? absolutely and, uh, Take, take a little, little bit of initiative to, to do something on your own. Um, not saying that you need to go dive headfirst into, you know, replacing all of your network on your own. Mm -hmm. um, in fact, don't do that. Yeah. If, if you know what you're doing, fantastic, but maybe stay away. Head for open waters, big tuna. But, um, you know, t a little bit on your own, that's, yep. that's always beneficial. Yeah. No, I like that. And um, I think find a partner that'll, like, facilitate that, right? Yeah. Um, hey, we have a password change for this over and over, and Sally's called you six times. Like, do you want the SOP on how to change this password? Like, you have access to it. We can help you with that, you know, and just assign one person um, and becoming efficient. Um, the other thing, like... You see it a lot with 365. Yeah. Do you, you know, hey, uh, we got to add Brandon to this group. Yep. You know, it's a it's a Green Bay sales group. Uh, can you do that? And you're like, yeah, yeah, no problem. Um, then they get a bill at the end of the month. Hey, we got billed a quarter hour for this. Like, well, yeah, we had to jump into here. We do this, you know, add it. And then, you know, you, you also wanted Brandon added to this group. So we went and did that right away. You know, if that's, if that's a, a pain point, you're like, no problem. We can give you access to go do yeah, that. Absolutely. And, you know, we're ideally you're not causing any other trouble, Yeah. but yeah, we can give you access to go to that. And there's quite a few places that we work with that do that type of administration or, or internal yeah, work on their own. Absolutely. And if we, I mean, if that's what they're looking for, like, let's be effective in-house. Yeah. Let's work yeah. with you on that. Um, the last thing I think would just be like using the tools that are actually important for, how do you say that? Like, uh, you don't always see an ROI on every IT tool, but like making sure you're really getting a tool that's working for you. Don't be afraid to ask your MSP provider, like, what has this tool stopped in the last six months? What yeah. has, what has happened? Are you like, can you run a report for a me? Report card, right? Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. And uh, somebody in sales that I've seen other sales proposals, uh, I've seen some things that I'm like, you guys were going to buy that, you know, and oh, yeah. that it was proposed to you. And I'm not going to say it's like bad, but like, you know, this dark web monitoring and scraping of this, this, this. And I'm like, this is a six person shop. You guys don't eat like this might yeah. not be maybe, something that you need to pay this large price tag for. Maybe that assists with trust of the organization you're working with too, right? If, if you as a business owner, you know, or I reach out to who I'm working with for my technical resource and I'm saying, Hey, what is this antivirus or, you know, what is the security suite that I purchased from you? What does it do? Mm -hmm. And it takes two, three days for them to get back to you. And the answer they get back to you is like, it, you know, it does a lot. It's like, it keeps you secure. Yeah. Like, 
okay. I mean, I'm sure it does, right? Like, you know, it costs a lot of money. Like, great. Yeah. Uh, can, can we get it some better examples? better keep me secure. Of, yeah. Like, what does it stop? Oh, nothing. Like, it's so secure, it stops nothing. You know, like, and I'm, you know, if, if, if that was the case, like, we'll relay that to you. But yeah. we're also not going to go and make up these fake threats or, like, you know, try to break in. Sure, you know, sure. Like, yeah. Like, hey, man, there's plenty of examples, plenty of real-world examples. If not, you know, on your network, then... Uh, maybe somebody else that we work with that there's there's always threats happening. Oh, yeah. Um, yeah and that's absolutely. why there's things in place to stop yeah, that. 100%. So, um, no, I, I like this. I think IT budgeting is one of those things that just needs to be talked about and um, not be afraid to challenge the other MSPs that are out there, figure out where you can find those cost savings and what are the correct tools for your business. So, uh, hopefully you found this informative. If you're ever looking for help when it comes to IT budgeting, reach out to M2 Technology. We'd be happy to help. Uh, look forward to talking to you on all the socials out there. Make sure you like and follow. And we will see you next time on IT Unplugged.